So this is what a second year aerospace engineering student's timetable looks like. And it looks about half full, right? Well, in fact, this is probably only one third of the hours you'll spend towards your degree in aerospace engineering. But what did he say? Because these are purely your contact hours with lecturers and other staff at university. But other work you do have to put in are your assignment work hours and also your revision time. So they all culminate to the total time you'll spend on your university work. I've received quite a number of questions about, you know, how much time will you have? What if I study aerospace engineering? Do I get free time if I choose to study aerospace engineering? What are the work hours like while studying this degree? Well, I have made another video about that, so you can check this out over here. But in this video, what I wanna really explain is how you can minimize your time doing work for your degree by just being able to properly manage your time. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how I evolved my time management setup and method over the course of the four years whilst I was studying aerospace engineering. Let's start off with the first version of how I managed my time. And this was using an Excel spreadsheet. So in the Excel spreadsheet, I used to put like, you know, the time in the day on one side and then have like a, a populated sort of timetable of the week of when I'd block out times to say, I'd be doing this work and this work and so on, depending on like say the course code or something. Um, this was great because you're able to clearly see what you need to do when and which time of the day. However, there are cons to this whole model because the thing is you can't really shift around your time easily. So say if you have like other things you need to do, you can't really amend your timetable that well. Um, the other downside is that for every time you want to see your timetable, you have to open up Excel on your computer, which can take a while to do, and it just becomes like a really tedious task. It's really difficult as well to look at a spreadsheet on your phone. Like you're, you're here and you can't really see much when it's like this wide of a screen. So those are some of the negatives to using an, an Excel spreadsheet. And ultimately that's why it barely got used. So then I evolved my time management into a new sort of thing. My next iteration of how I managed my time was using a Google Calendar. Hooray, finally I discovered what a calendar was. I don't know why it took me so long, but hey ho, at least we're here now. So I used the Google Calendar that I get provided with my university email, and I would used to do a similar thing that I did do with my spreadsheet, where I would block out times during the days um, that I had free time just to say, okay, I'm going to do two hours of say AER 120, two hours here of like MEC 305 and so on. So I just block out times related to specific subjects and then I know that that's the sort of time where I'd have to work on something related to that subject. Some of the problems this solved over using the spreadsheet was that I'm able to reallocate time really easily. I can drag and sort of drop like the boxes of like the calendar um, events around. So if I have say time I'm going to be meeting friends, I can stick that into my calendar. Then I know, okay, this is when I'm going to be meeting friends to do stuff, but then I'll have time to do work around it. Um, and also the other problem it solved is like, if I want to view the timetable on my phone, it's super easy because there's a whole app for it and it's just really nicely laid out compared to looking at a spreadsheet on your phone. However, the cons are basically is, I don't really know what work I will be doing in the blocked time. That's a really annoying point because you know, say if I blocked out one and a half hours or something to do work related to a module called AER120, um, I will know, okay, cool, I have to do some work related to that module, but then I'll spend time thinking about what I actually need to do during that one hour and a half. That became really bad, so that's why I had to think of my third and most recent iteration of how to manage my time. My third and most recent iteration of how I manage my time involves two different tools. One again is Google Calendar and a second one is a tool called Trello. This method is basically what I used for majority of my final year and I will explain how it works. On Trello, I created a board that's known as a Kanban board where you would have columns and you'd have cards inside each column. So generally your columns are labeled like to do, in progress and completed or done. And each card in each column is like a specific task you need to work on. Some examples of tasks that I put into these columns are like, you know, tutorial sheet 1A, subject whatever, or tutorial sheet B, subject whatever, or, you know, write introduction for assignment whatever for course this. So they're broken down tasks really, you know, easily doable and probably like, one hour, two hours at most. The good thing though with using this Kanban board, right, is that for each of those cards or tickets as they're known, you can put a deadline of when you need to do it by. So say if you have to do say X tutorial by the end of like some weeks, then you can say, okay, I need to do this tutorial by the end of this week. So then you know that that has to be done. And you can order the columns based on chronological order. 
So then you can just pick the top, top um, tasks move them over into pro in progress and work on those. But maybe you're wondering, how does all of this link to Google Calendar? Because you've not even mentioned that at all. You've just been talking about Trello this, Trello that, but listen here. So with your Google Calendar, you can block off times of like, say two hours and so on saying, I need to just do work, generic work, right? But you, then you go to your Trello and you can see what work actually needs to be done. So if you say, I'm gonna time block myself for two hours and I'll get this task done. You can drag that task into in progress work on that, check it off. And then if you have time left, you can start on your next ticket. So you basically just like, you know, checking them off as you go along. And if you're doing this process, then you don't need to know, okay, what shall I work on now? Because you already know that. And you don't need to know when can I work on it because that's what your Google Calendar is for. So now you're, you're not having to waste time thinking about, oh, when do I need to work on this? And what do I need to work on? Therefore, removing that thinking time that you normally would have wasted, you know, quite a, a few hours on, especially in a week's time. You, if you add all of those hours up, you're probably wasting quite a lot of time. So that's why using Trello and a Google Calendar in this sense is really, really effective to ensure you minimize the time you're spending on working on your course. And as long as you complete these tasks before the deadlines that you've set, you're more or less guaranteed to not be late in doing anything at this point. As long as you keep checking those tasks away, then you're, you're fine. This is not just a process that I've used and I invented because it's quite industry standard, you know, especially in the field that I'm in now, which is software engineering. Kanban boards are used so often because it's just such a efficient way to, you know, get tasks done and log what tasks need to be done. And it's, uh, yeah, so I'd recommend it because it is quite an industry standard method of managing your time. So definitely worthwhile and it's a proven and tested process. So yeah, this final iteration is something that I would recommend you to use throughout your time at university because it just makes your life 10 times easier. If you're still eager to know how much time you actually have as an engineering student or an aerospace engineering student in university, do click on this, this thing, it will appear and you can go check out that video. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the, the like button and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.